Hey guys, I hope that y'all had a great Christmas. It's the end of December, beginning of January. Kind of a weird transitional time in home decor. So I thought for this video, we would do a thrift store challenge where I go into the thrift store and I find e items either to flip or use in home decor. And because <laughs> I like to give myself an extra challenge, we're gonna go into the bins today where it is truly hit or miss. You never know what you're gonna find. It's gonna be fun though, so let's do it. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you have not been to the Goodwill bins before, it's all these bins full of stuff that they roll out all day long. And then at my bins, they also have these walls that are usually full of hard goods. The clothing is paid by the pound here, but all of the hard goods are not. It's just all priced individually by the cashier. Look at these little shelf sitters. They're little bunny rabbits. That is adorable. I can definitely do a little vignette with these. These adorable rustic handmade art pieces fit perfectly into my decor. I styled them on a hutch I have in my dining room and I styled them both together as a collection and separately. Ooh, a bin of kitchen stuff. I can definitely do something with this. The first thing I want to do is remove the handle from this basket. It is attached by rivets and I'm going to show y'all a super easy way to remove rivets. You want to grab your drill and a drill bit that is larger than your rivets and just simply drill them out. It is super easy to do and comes apart great and doesn't destroy your piece. If you were to try to pull this handle off, it would have definitely messed up the metal. These are some finials that I thrifted. Never pass these up at the thrift store, guys. I think they're going to go really great with this piece, but since the metal is so distressed, I feel like I also need to distress the finials. The finials already have a screw in them, which is perfect. It fits perfectly at the bottom of our basket. And I'm going to use a little bit of Gorilla Glue. That way everything is permanently together when it dries. But to attach these two pieces together, I'm actually going to use this little bead that came off of a garland. And I'm going to screw it onto the screw that is already there. And that's going to keep my leg tightly attached to my little metal basket. So this was just a very quick, easy way using items I already had in my stash to attach legs to this metal piece. So I'm gonna attach the other two legs to the other two sides. And also this metal is pretty bendable. So once I have everything attached, I'm gonna kind of bend the legs a little bit so they come out as an angle instead of being straight. I think that just looks better. And I also decided to add a little bit of hot glue just to make sure everything stays at the angle that I want. I decided to style this in my master bathroom. I put some little rolled up towels in it and some handmade soap and it came out so cute that I am actually keeping this piece exactly like this. And since we're in my bathroom, I want to show y'all some other metal pieces that I have. I love a good colander. We use this one to hold the soap that my husband loves. And this one I'm just using as decor in the background with all of my other beautiful pieces in this cabinet. Y'all know I love thrifting vintage kitchen items and I actually do use them all over my house. In this bin, they have a bunch of these old lights. Look at these brass bases and the patina on them. All right, I think we need to do some of these. The first thing I need to do is take these apart. It's really easy. Unscrew the light bulb. I cut the cord with some scissors and then the rest of it just all unscrewed for myself. Also, a lot of lamps are like this. So if you see a lamp you like, grab it. You can always take it apart and use the pieces. This is the Late Bloomers candle ring in the color cream. The Late Bloomer collection is one of my favorite on the website. And you can actually pull this wreath apart and the flowers come out in little bunches that are the perfect size for these little brass bases. All I'm gonna do is hot glue the florals into my brass pieces. And from this one candle ring, I was able to make six of these pieces. 
this piece is just so unique and so adorable and the perfect size to stick in any vignette that you already have set up around your house i styled it in several different areas in my house and as you can see it fits in perfectly with my current decor Ooh, a wooden rolling pin can't go wrong with this the quickest, easiest way to make a rolling pin look older and vintage is to paint the handles in a fun color. I'm using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color English Ivy. This might be my go-to color for spring. It is absolutely beautiful. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and a baby wipe and distress it. I find the combination of the two give me the most authentic, vintage, worn look. I decided I also wanted to add a stamp to the middle. This is the birds and bees stamp from IOD and I'm using the stone gray ink. I'm gonna ink up my stamps and I'm just going to roll my rolling pin on top of the stamps and it's going to give me the most beautiful impression. As you can see, the stone gray is just a very light color and I think it is perfect. Rolling pins are just so fun and easy to upcycle. And I styled it in this basket that I actually did on a thrift flip video a few years ago and it's still in my home. I absolutely love it and I have it filled with lots of vintage kitchen items and greenery. Just found all of these cute little sheep. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet. I'm hoping I'll find something else at the bins or maybe in my stash at home that I could pair with them and do something. I just found this in a bin. I have no clue what it is. Maybe it was a magnifying glass at one time. I don't know. It has that look, but I love the metal on it and I feel like I could do something with this. The handle of this object had some kind of drawing on it, so I decided to paint it. And if you know what this thing is, y'all please leave a comment below i'm using fusion paint in the color lichen it is just such a beautiful green color and i also discovered that the round metal piece in the center pops out which is going to make doing the next part really easy i'm no artist but i feel like i could handle some heels and some uh clouds so the my heels kind of look the same so i just added a little bit of white paint to one of them so that way there was a little bit variation i'm using fusion paint in the color casement and i'm also going to use this to make some clouds i'm using the paint in my cap because it's a little bit drier and thicker and it's going to give me a little texture in my clouds as well all right how did i do does it look like some heels and some clouds now i'm just going to hot glue my little sheep figurine i'm going to do one big sheep and one small sheep at the bottom and then i'm going to add one small sheep to the top as well and that leaves me with two more sheep to use on another project any ideas for these once again i have no clue what this is but when it is this cute does it really even matter? I think I did a great job with this challenge, but I do have one question. Do y'all think I should have painted a blue sky? Leave a comment below. If you do not know what Squarespace is, it is an online hosting platform, and that is who actually hosts my e-commerce store, juliesdesignsandsigns.com. And whether you have an online store, a local business, if you just want to create a portfolio or blog or offer a service, Squarespace has so many different options to host your website. So Squarespace has everything that you need to grow your business online. You can create a website using their very easy to use templates, designer fonts, color palettes. You can easily create an e-commerce store and you can also market your business by connecting your social accounts and by using their email campaigns. Squarespace is extremely user friendly. Even if you have no designer background, they have all these templates for you to pick from. It is really so easy, you guys. So if you're interested in trying out Squarespace, y'all go to squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs and they are giving my viewers 10% off 
when you use code Julie's Designs and Signs, and I will have a link to everything in the description below for y'all. Ooh, books. These are so great for decor. So I'm going to grab a few of these to do something with. Here's a little tip for y'all. Always look at the pages and I pick out the ones that are the most aged and would look good together. I never grab these yellow ones. I do not think those look good. See, look at these nice aged pages. The first thing I want to do is rip the covers off of the books. I love when it comes off perfectly like this, but it doesn't always. Sometimes you have some of it that wants to stay on there and you kind of have to pick it off. But this is what you're left with once you get all the covers off. I, I want my top page to be blank, but I couldn't find a blank page at the beginning of the book. So I just found one in the book, ripped it out, and I'm just gluing it to the top. Now you can stop there. It looks good, but I want to use IOD Kindest Regards stamp. It's like French handwriting. It's so pretty. And I also want to use IOD's China Blue Ink. I think blue ink with this is really going to look good. So I inked up my stamp and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my books and I'm going to push them into the stamp and it's going to come out so good. And I'm also going to do that blank top as well. I love how the kindest regard stamp looks on here. I'm doing a book stack, but I think this single book also looks really good. And since I'm doing a book stack, I want to kind of bind them together. So I'm going to use a little bit of jute twine and some sprigs of greenery from the baby's twilight garland. I just love the vintage look of this greenery. It is no secret that I love using books in my home decor, and this is a great, easy, simple, fun way to make your own vintage looking books. Ooh, some paper plate holder baskets. I have ideas for these. So many ideas for these. You can use it as a riser to lift up your decor. I just put a bowl with some greenery in it. You could also grab a cloche out of your stash or at the thrift store, put it on top of the little baskets and put something adorable inside. This is a freezer basket. I have two of these under my church pew and this is how I have this one styled with a stack of these. But that area was way too messy for me to photograph. So I put it up here, you get the point. I also use them all the time in the background of my cabinets. It just adds so much interest and texture. Also, of course, you can put them on the wall and I also have a lot of that around my house. I just love the way these look. Can't have enough baskets. It's a pretty little crocheted piece. It has some fringes on it. I think it's an infinity scarf, but these are great as decor for winter. I have this crock with just a plain Christmas tree in it. So I felt like for winter time, it would be perfect to add this scarf to it for just a very cozy winter look. And of course you could put this in a basket or anywhere you just wanna add a touch of cozy winter. And of course, y'all know everything looks cute hanging on a hook. And this is perfect just to kind of transition my foyer into winter time. So just remember, if you find something in a color pattern texture that you really like, you can use it in your home decor in a different way than what it was intended for. Ooh, what is this? Oh, look at the shape on here. We can hang it up or it will also sit flat on the ground. The lining really wasn't my style. So the first thing I wanted to do was remove that. And after I had cut a few of the stitches, it really came out super easy. I also decided to remove the buttons. I thought about removing the handles as well, but I thought it would be a cute extra detail on the basket. I put it on my coffee table in my living room and y'all I thrifted this huge glass jug and it fits perfectly in here. And this is some new greenery on the website. It's called Little Luna Leaves and I love it because it looks like branches that have just been dusted with snow. I think it is perfect for winter time. And I love a basket paired with glass and when I can find two pieces that fit 
perfectly together that is so exciting and i think this is a great transition from christmas into winter always have lots of dishware here look at the color of this and the beautiful crazing they have this one and then also this one and i like that they're a little bit different they do have a chip on it or a few chips but i think we can still do something with them i just found this little plate laura ashley and i think it will go good with the other plates that i found as you can see, I really love using plates in the backgrounds of my vignettes. So thrifting plates or pottery or dishware in the colors of the season is a great way to just sprinkle it in to the decor that you already have in your home. Ooh, an enamel planter cannot go wrong with this, originally from Ikea. These glossy white pieces are the perfect thing to add IOD traditional pots transfer to. It is one of my favorite transfers. You get four sheets, two with black images, one with white, and one with that beautiful vintage blue color. The traditional pots transfers just add that little extra detail that make these pieces look a little more high end. They are perfect for pots or for canisters. There is never a shortage of glassware at the thrift store, so definitely look around, see what you can find, and maybe you can put a little collection of items together. Okay, I am not normally one to gravitate towards pink glass, but I am loving just a touch of it for spring. I think this arrangement is so pretty, and how cute is this rabbit? It is actually available on my website. And also, if you loved the greenery that I used in my vignettes in today's video, a lot of it is available to purchase on my website, juliesdesignsandsigns.com. So much great greenery, so much cute stuff for spring. And don't forget that all of the paint and products I use in today's video is also available on my website. Well guys, that was super fun. I am not going to lie. I was very nervous about doing this video because you really never know what you're going to find at the bin. Some days they're really amazing like today and some days you just find nothing and I only had today <laughs> to do this video. So that was great. We had a good day at the bins and if you love this video, make sure you are following me over on Drew Julie Thrifts, my other YouTube channel where I take y'all along on all of my thrifting adventures y'all let me know how y'all like this video where we actually went to the store and i showed you how i would style these in my own home how i would thrift flip them um, i definitely hope it gave y'all some great ideas on how to use these items that you find at the thrift store and y'all let me know it's kind of a weird time of year january um let me know which direction you would like me to go with my videos do y'all want to see year round decor do y'all want to go into spring i don't know i don't know what to do y'all definitely leave a comment below let me know and do not forget if you would like to start your own website y'all go check out squarespace.com slash julie's designs and signs and use my code to get 10 percent off and i will have that linked in the description below hope y'all enjoyed today's video and i will see y'all in the next one